It's the year 2024, and if you have been playing Warlock, you probably have been stuck using the Solar subclass. What if I told you that I flipped the meta and that you have been sleeping on one of the best options in the game? This is why I'm excited to introduce you to the Underdog. A subclass thought to have little chance of winning a fight against the known meta subclasses? Before I can talk to you about every detail of this build, we have to ask the question, why now? It isn't a surprise that Warlock is my least played character across all three, and Solar wasn't always the main play. Skip back to about four years ago, you can see a good amount of content I produced contained Warlock gameplay. This is because during this time, I felt like they were more than just a walking wall of radiance, more than just ability spam. We had access to Arc Web and Double Icarus Dash, a time where I'd mostly run Domblade to play aggressive rather than defensive. Say what you want, but I felt like they oversimplified the awesome sci-fi power fantasy, and that's not even the main problem. With the introduction of Dominion, a objective-based trials mode, Will has become a no-brainer pick. As a warlock, not equipping a super that basically turns you immortal is basically trolling yourself. With Checkmate out, it almost feels more important to run a meta subclass, but what even is a meta subclass? What decides if a certain subclass can be considered meta? If we go based on what the community thinks, then it's numbers. The percentage that players choose to run something like Will versus something like Void. What numbers don't tell you is the player's inability to be willing to try different things that can yield the same results. And that is exactly why the underdog will be a perfect breakdown. I am not afraid to step out of my comfort zone and lose to later become more powerful. By the time you master this build, you'll be doing just what I do, converting others to the Void side. Creating a build not considered meta will be a difficult task as I spend hours and hours investing into different stats and changing on my fragments to best fit what I need. I'm looking for consistency in an absolute clutch factor when you experience the closest games possible. As someone who plays solo queue trials and does carries in the 3's playlist, I knew right away that this build had to focus on intellect. With that fact, I could save that for the end and figure out where to start. As a warlock, there's a few things we know right away, like our drip is boring compared to the other classes. I mean, I still forget about the little bond that we put around our arm. What the hell is even that? We have access to the class ability Rift, which provides a constant healing while we stand in it, and even an overshield if we have full health. This ability cooldown is decreased the higher our recovery, so I want to make sure this is maxed out once we start investing into stats. Besides a wide range of grenades, we only have one melee option, the Pocket Singularity. It will kick things off and start proving the power we are soon to experience. Even when players start to slide at you or jump towards you, the Pocket Singularity does a perfect job of interrupting their play. It can keep players at a distance, break their movement flow, or straight up hit a player around corners if you need it to. The more that I used it, the more I was able to defeat targets hiding around walls, Especially if there were tie-ins behind a barricade, the melee would apply the pressure needed. It only took me a couple of solo trials games to realize that Void tie-ins were very strong in melee-based combat. I kept noticing that they would regenerate their health and their entire team's health after winning an aggressive push with their melee. I decided to take a page out of their book and apply our first fragment, Echo of Leeching. With this combination alone, I knew that the underdog was a perfect build for passive-aggressive playstyles. Cautiously waiting for the moment to strike and then immediately go in full force. I noticed in several of my solo matches and in the threes playlist that as I won many of my fights, there was really no clear way of fighting the next. I felt the momentum, but my HP bar just wouldn't keep up, and that's where I'm introducing our first fragment, Echo of Vigilance. This very much works like the One Eyed Mask Exotic, where if I defeat a highlighted target, I basically just get an overshield. With this and Devour accessibility, I started to see the vision. I had the right tools to play aggressive, but now I needed to get my class to be more powerful in matchups that favored slow play. This is why I love Child of the Old Gods. Every rift gives me access to this ability that I can send out after some damage. The Old Gods ability can do the following things. Number one, it can force players to move. Number two, it can cause players to change their focus to shooting it. Number three, it can damage low health targets and get a cleanup. And lastly, number four, it can apply Weaken, which will cause targets to take more damage from any source. This is so clutch because it can increase my chances at winning a duel or be combined with my abilities to push up their lethality. By this point, I had a couple hours on Void Lock and I kept running into some issues as I messed around with the last fragments, the last two aspects, and some grenades. If I was running Echo of Undermining, my grenade cooldown would just be way too slow. I made some changes. For one, I went with a newly buffed up Devour Aspect, 
feed the void. I took off the weakening fragment and slotted in the last two, Echo of Obscurity and Dilation. One was for a simple stat bump, and the other enhanced my radar to help me find an opportunity for a play. As for the grenade, I went with Scatter because these are widely known to be overtuned, but what I wanted the most was a grenade that activated instantly and did damage. After several trials carries in the 3v3 playlist, it was all coming together. It was perfect. Devour allowed me to get my abilities much faster. At this point, I wasn't too concerned with what exotic I needed to use, but I knew that this build could work with any weapon loadout. What is something that every weapon loadout doesn't share? Handling. If I could grant handling bonus to my build, then the underdog really could make anything work. With that being said, Ophidian Aspect became the main exotic. While testing this build, I ran an early version with max recovery and like tier 7 intellect, but I ran into some problems. For example, my super speed just would not keep up with the speed of Well and Bubble inside of Trials Dominion. I felt slow, and while transversive steps could fix that, I had a different idea. Let me show you the stat investments I did that ultimately allowed me to take every single person flawless. I stayed with tier 10 recovery, as this not only allows me to heal faster so I can go back into action, but it also decreased the cooldown on my rift. I invested stats into intellect all the way up to tier 9. This was as high as I could get it and saved one tier to invest into other stats. I took these points into discipline and mobility. I knew I wanted 5 mobility, as this would make strafing and fights feel real good and reduce the need of transversive steps. After that, I decided to invest into tier 9 grenades. I specifically did it this way so that the rest can be dumped into strength. With a good stat distribution, it was time to do the final touches that completed this build. On my helmet, I inserted Dynamo. As I played aggressive, there were many opportunities to get more super energy by popping a rift nearby. This made a massive impact on those close matches. I could always be ready to clutch the game with a Nova Bomb. By the way, is it too late to say that I prefer Vertex over the other Nova Bomb and I prefer Burst Glide instead of Blink? The thing is, Vortex is a fast-acting super that leaves targets with less time to react. As for Blink, let's just say that Blink doesn't let me do the forward aggressive pushes that I want. Blink Colt fans, please don't come knocking at my door. Next, my gauntlets. Because I decided to use an exotic that increased my handling and reload speed, this meant there was no need for these mods. Instead, I ran two bolstering detonation and a single momentum transfer, which would help get my abilities back faster. My chest piece was dedicated to unflinching mods, and my boots focused on getting my health back and granting abilities if I ever picked up an orb. Similarly, my bond was focused on creating said orb and granting me further ability cooldown. There you have it, a build that has been refined over and over. People won't expect this playstyle, and by the time they decide to respect it, it's going to be too late. There is crazy clutch factor here with the Nova Bomb and all the other abilities going on in the subclass. This really is the underdog. People don't expect it to do well against the competition, and in this case, they just don't expect it to do well against the meta. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Before I end the video, I just want to say thank you for supporting the new project series. As a creator, it's always kind of scary to try something new, but I like evolving my content and raising the bar for myself. In the past, I used to do creative writing, so incorporating some storytelling into the videos has been fun, creating a video that's meant to be watched from beginning to the end. Now, the first episode launched and there was so much to improve, so I'm excited to see where these videos go in the future. You folks have always been asking for more builds, more build breakdowns, and this is exactly what I want to give you, some super in-depth nerdy talk, but also some fun gameplay and just kind of creativeness going into them. Anyways, thank you again, and I'll see you on the next one.